You know what our data center users just love? When we power down a whole rack just to swap out a hard drive or do some quick maintenance. This server rack right here has a few hundred users right now. Some dude in the middle of his workout tracking his heart rate with a cloud service. Some couple using a chat app, possibly about to get engaged via text message. And there's an order in progress for some fast food delivery. I'll just throw this big switch. Boom! Ha ha ha! Sorry about that workout, dude. There goes your perfect streak. Propose on another day, super cute couple. Oh, and too bad about that pizza order delivery, D&D &D party. My bad. Maybe it would be a bit kinder if we had a way to hot swap some things. Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. Today, my guest is Brian Costello from TE Connectivity, and we're going to talk about sliding power solutions that help you pull drawers out of racks without powering them down and without a bunch of big power cables dangling along. And before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find even more information about sliding power connectors from TE Connectivity. Hi, Brian. Thank you so much for joining me. Thanks, Amelia. Thanks for having me. So I'm excited to talk about sliding power. But before we get into all of that, can you tell me a little bit about TE and your expertise in power for folks in the audience who may not be aware? Well, more than ever before, TE is partnering with key customers and working closely with them to find cost-effective power system solutions. When we engage with customers, we are able to quickly determine feasible product solutions. And when it's early in the design cycle, we have more options, including modifying existing connector designs or even brand new products. So it pays to get involved with you guys earlier rather than later, right? Definitely. As you know, TE has one of the largest power product portfolios in the industry. So we have many options to choose from. We also support customers with multiple levels of support, starting with our technical sales team, world-class field application engineers, and the system architecture team that has exposure to many customers across multiple industry segments to provide expertise and to gain deeper understanding of near and long-term customer needs. I'm part of the system architecture team within data and devices. TE not only supplies a wide array of power connectors, but also provides power cables and bus bar assemblies. Our large engineering and manufacturing footprint enables TE to move at the speed of the customer, which is key to exceeding their expectations. So I've known TE for a long time as a connector supplier, but I guess today we're going to be talking more specifically about your recently introduced sliding power connector systems. So can we dive in and talk more about that? Sure. The sliding power connector system was designed to replace bulky and expensive power cables in hot serviceable storage and compute drawers. We have several key points that I'd like to bring up. First, we can minimize system downtime because we allow for the serviceability of system drawers. One of the main areas that we saw with most customers in initially was storage drawers because they're filled with hard drives that have a certain time where they eventually could go bad. In those systems, you do not want to be powering them down in order to swap out drives. So this would be like if I was replacing one drive in a RAID array, but I wouldn't want to power down the whole array? Yes. And so the alternate method of doing it or the way it's done now is with cabling. So you have a storage drawer that is cabled to the back end of the system. So as you pull it out, the cable extends. But that is costly, and it also has some downsides as far as you have to have a mechanism to allow the cables to pull forward. You're going to experience a higher voltage drop over a longer cable. And so with sliding power, you actually put that inside the space of the drawer, either in the side or below. And then as the drawer is extended, it stays powered up. And so the only really connection you need is for the signaling, which is usually a much smaller cable. And so it's a lot easier to manage. So this lets me have my power on the sliding part, and I only have to have signal cables coming in. What are some of the other benefits that this brings to my system? So there's an energy efficiency that will occur because longer cables have a larger drop in voltage, and you, your power path is going through that length of cable always, whether the drawer is extended or it's closed. 
with sliding power, when the drawer is closed, which is in its normal operation, other than when the drawer might be serviced, it's a very short electrical path. And so with a lower voltage drop, that means more energy efficiency. And the very large operators are hugely concerned with the amount of power when you were talking about tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of devices in a data center. Any tiny little bit of power savings is amplified hugely, and they're very happy to have a product like Sliding Power. Sure. And in most data centers, power is the number one concern these days. And it seems like their biggest limitation is only how much power the power companies can sell them. Absolutely. And they're actually placing data centers, trying to get close to power plants just to have the ability to get the power they need. Absolutely. And you're saying there is a reliability advantage here as well. Yes, because when you have a complex cable assembly, these kind of big cables that are 50 and amps and higher are, are fairly large size. And managing that inside the system, making sure that they don't come off of their connection or that they have proper orientation, they don't get connected wrong. And so the simpler things are, the better. And the sliding power is a very straightforward and easy and kind of error-proof way to go. So I'm intrigued. How exactly does this sliding power connector system work? So the sliding power system is primarily a connector and a power rail, which could also be thought of as a bus bar. It maintains full electrical contact regardless of the position of the sliding connector along the power rail. We consider this a non-traditional power system since it's new and unique. Hopefully over time, it will become the standard. It eliminates the need for bulky power cables, as I mentioned before, and the mechanisms that go along with it to manage them. Quite frankly, it's a much more elegant solution. In most cases, the bus bar is a printed circuit board, but that's not mandatory. TE is working on cost-effective traditional bus bar designs to support longer lengths and higher current capacities than would otherwise be able to be done with a printed circuit board. Okay, got it. What are some of the important things that I need to consider when I'm designing and sliding power into my system? Well, the power rail itself is usually designed by the system engineer. In some cases, circuit protection components are put right on the bus bar board, which means that some signals are needed. The TE MBXLE connector is a great choice for power input to the power rail since it has both high current contacts as well as signals. In other cases where only power is needed, multiple options exist, including multi-beam XLE, such as power lug terminals and other simpler ways of attaching it. So I know a lot of mechanical things like connectors have a maximum number of times they can be exercised. So how many times can a drawer be operated and opened and closed using this kind of system? The number of durability cycles is probably one of the number one questions we're asked when we talk to customers about sliding power. We rate the connector for up to 100 cycles over a 700 millimeter long power rail. Since the actual length of the sliding power connector that will travel is very system dependent, so the number of cycles is design dependent. In other words, we test it to 70 kilometers in one direction and 70 kilometers back. If your application needs more than that, we'll be happy to discuss ways to extend the cycle life of the connector, possibly with enhanced platings or even enhanced contact design. So I'll try to keep my drawer sliding to less than 70 kilometers then? At that point, you probably have a system issue if you're having to open and close that drawer that many times. That seems like a pretty generous allotment. And there is a limitation on the amount of coffee that can be spilled inside the unit during all of that, right? No coffee could be spilled in that, although we do have customers that are using it in an immersed cooling environment. And that's something very new that was recently developed and at the Open Compute show last week. There were several vendors showing devices under liquid. Now, it's not coffee, so you can't drink it. Matter of fact, it doesn't seem right to me, but it works, and sliding power works fine in an immersed situation. Very cool. So what are the limits on the amount of power we can handle with this system? So right now, it's designed for 75 amps plus return. And that said, the original design requirements were 50 amp, which is what the power rails were originally designed for. As power requirements increase, as they always do, it's very feasible for us to design or change the design to incorporate higher power. With the specific connector we have today, that's probably in that 75 to maybe 80 amps or so. But by making a contact longer or bigger, we would be able to extend that. And also by changing the power rail to more of a traditional bus bar design where it has a lot more copper, we would have the ability to increase the power capacity. Okay, cool. So tell me, what kind of applications can this be used for? 
As I mentioned before, the biggest application is for storage. Storage drawers contain multiple hard drives, which over time are prone to failure. And this is the perfect application for sliding power due to its very small size and high power capacity. When a failure occurs, individual drives can be replaced quickly with no impact to the rest of the system. Other use cases, such as servers with devices like solid state storage or I.O. that can be replaced while the system is running can benefit from sliding power. Beyond that, other non-traditional system designs that need to tap into high power source in a compact space could also benefit. Okay, great. So explain to me a little bit more about how sliding power compares to how most other systems are done today. Currently, for systems that need to be serviceable, the only way to keep a removable drawer powered is to use a traditional power cable. As you can see from the image on the left, the cable needs a long service loop so that it can stretch as the system is extended, but also fold out of the way when retracted. As you can see, this presents a significant impediment to airflow, which we all know is critical to keeping things running efficiently. When the sliding power connector is used, there is no impedance to airflow since the power rail and connector are placed below or to the side of the IT payload, not behind it. Okay, and how has this changed the way the system architects design new systems? The sliding power connector enables system designers to make full use of the space they have in the rack. Here on this slide, we see how a server shelf can have two drawers with 24 hot swap drives in each and still have room for the server in the center section. Previously, a significant amount of space would have been needed for the power cable system to the rear of that. So it effectively gives us a lot more space for the system designer to put IT payload equipment as opposed to needing a cable system. Got it. Okay, great. This is cool. So what if I am ready to get started designing in sliding power into my systems? I'm going to click that link and go right there. But what else will I find there? What kind of information and resources do you have to help me get started with sliding power? Well, Amelia, when you click on that link, you can find drawings, 3D models, product specs, application specs, and test reports. Everything that you need to develop and design a system with sliding power. Okay, so as I embark on my sliding power connector journey, one of the things I'm going to remember is not carry my coffee into the data center, check. But other than that, what kind of things would you like people to remember about TE Connectivity's sliding power connector system? Well, if you need to keep a system powered on while servicing replaceable components, the sliding power connector from TE will provide a cost-effective replacement for traditional cable and support up to 75 amps of current. Also, the shorter power path enables less bulk resistance and therefore lower voltage drop, which provides best-in-class energy efficiency. The simpler design yields a higher system reliability since there are less moving parts to break. Excellent. Well, Brian, I really appreciate the information you've given me today. Thank you so much for joining me. Thanks, Amelia. It was great being here. And before we go, you didn't forget to click that link, did you? There you can find a whole lot of information about sliding power connectors from TE Connectivity. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, head on over to the Chalk Talk section of EE Journal. Can't miss it, it's right across the top. Or head on over to YouTube, keyword EE Journal. <laughs>